call to order the um, March 8th Towns and Conservation uh, Commission meeting. Uh, can I have a roll call, please? Joel Savoy present. Linda Mack present. James Gates present. Anna LaCoy present. Anna present. Meeting is being uh, video recorded. Is anyone else recording? Chairman's additions and deletions. Chair report. Um, we, Matt, or I, I received a complaint um, uh, for soil disturbance at 75 Pierce Road. Um, this is something that came in front of us, uh, I believe, November um, as part of the ZBA refer referral. And at that time, um, it was deemed to not have any water, or it was outside the 100 foot buffer. But after receiving the fleet and Matt going out and um, physically measuring it, uh, there's a seasonal stream that is uh, 66 feet uh, away from the uh, pile of soil was full of. Um, on Friday, I asked for a silt fence to be put up, which was part of the original comments um, by us um, to the ZBA, and um, those had not been uh, that had not been completed as of Friday morning. Um, Friday afternoon, the site contractor uh, started the process of putting them up. Uh, we asked that further work um, within the buffer stop until uh, approval is granted by the commission and the NOI is filed. Um, and this will be discussed at our March 22nd meeting. We have requested the owner be present. Matt, do you have anything to add to that? Thank you for joining us. Yeah, of course. Hi, guys. Um, so, yeah, I think that about sums it up. Um, I went out there today and I did notice that the soil pile was about 65 feet. 66 feet from the stream. Um, the stream didn't appear to be flowing at the moment, but you could tell at some points water was flowing through through there. Um, so I sent a letter um, asking them to stop work within the buffer area um, and asked them to come to the meeting on uh, March 22nd. Thank you. Good work. Quick, efficient work. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So that's what I have for chair report. Um, Matt has commu been communicating questions or things, um, you know, to keep things flowing. Um, and Jessica has started to yeah, check in with us. Um, I told her not to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, uh, review and approve meeting minutes from 2 dash or February 1st meeting. I could not find anything. So you're well, I, was, I did with them. He did a great job. They look they look great. Yeah. Did a great job, Matt, on those minutes. We have a motion to approve them in a second. Pat, do you have anything to add to it? Yeah. Motion to approve uh, the meeting minutes from February 1, 2023. Second. We'll call the vote, please. Long Savoya. Linda Mack, yes. James Gates, yes. Pam yes. Pat Dunwell, yes. Okay. Um, 1.6 agents report. Matt. Yep, I can read that for you right here. So there was uh, a billing permit inter interdepartmental signature sign off on 108 and 110 West Meadow Road for two single family homes. No wetlands are involved. Uh, another one was signed off at 173 Lunenburg Road for a ground mounted solar system. This was, again, outside of any 100 foot wetland buffers. Um, referrals completed none. Uh, Board of Health interdepartmental signatures. Uh, 46 Spalding was signed off on. Uh, six Squanica Terrace, the Harbor Trace Water Treatment Plant, uh, their septic system, uh, and 108 and 110 West Meadow Road septic systems. Uh, completed approvals were sent 
Uh, the RDA for 100 Warren Road, uh, a negative three determination was reached at our last meeting. The DA was issued March 2nd. Uh, for three-wheeler road septic replacement, uh, negative three determination was reached. The determination determination of applic- applicability was issued March 2nd. Uh, the Squanacook Meadows invasive species removal uh, was given a negative three determination, and a t- determination of applicability was sent March 2nd. And finally, uh, the 549 Main Street septic replacement NOI was approved, and an OOC was issued March 2nd. Uh, as well as the request for partial COC at 30 Shirley Road was approved, and the C- partial COC was issued February 24th. Uh, applications, uh, they, this has come before us before, but the request for COC 7 and 9 Riverbank Terrace, uh, I met with town council on February 28th to discuss what methods are available to the CONSCOM in order to receive owed fines. Uh, six miscellaneous, uh, we are discussing the enforcement order at 158 Main Street again tonight. Compliance is ongoing. Uh, I visited 72 Main Street on March 1st to discuss the Townsend Historic Society's plan to build additions to the Reed Homestead. Uh, I mailed completed approvals to applicants and Mass DEP uh, February 24th and March 2nd. And I mailed letters inviting Deborah and Thomas to this meeting uh, to discuss 79 Riverbank Terrace and Lawrence was sent an email. And that is it. Matt, did you field confirm uh, the lots on West Meadow? Uh, Field confirm, no, but I looked at, um, because at first I was concerned that it was within the Trout, um, or not Troutbrook, uh, Lockbrook area, but it's well, it's outside of 300 feet from Lockbrook. And then their engineers submitted plans that had delineated wetlands, and they were outside of the 100 foot wetlands that were delineated on their plans. Thank you. Yep. Can I, can I, I'm sorry to do this, but I was looking at the um, minutes and um, JG is James Gates. Yep. So it says that he made a motion to request that these items be completed, but I don't think James ever makes a motion. Right? Is that correct? I can, but, but I, I don't. He is able to. He's able but he, to, but I don't think he did that night. Not to be picky about it. I actually think you did make yes, a motion did. that. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. usually it's yeah. your. Yeah, right. But, don't, but I'm allowed to. Did. Jessica did check on that. Yeah. But typically. Okay. I just wanted to make sure it was. Yep. There was that's fine. There was I can weird. double check. I can double check on that, uh, Linda. Okay. There was something weird about why that happened. But yeah, because you don't normally. Yeah, you know, normally. Yeah, you know, so that's what I was really looking at. Sure. So Matt will. Check that, but yep, I will confirm. Um, and then we all just have them make uh, if there's changes needed. We'll yeah, just have them make. Yeah, changes. yeah, just make the change if if there is a change to be made. Okay. Sure. Um, oh yeah, yeah. All right. Um, Moving on to 2.1 enforcement order for 158 Main Street with updates. Hello, team. You don't mind. The weather is causing a problem. All three people have been working together, the uh, contractor. And uh, Stan and the lawyer, and uh, Stan's going to talk to him tomorrow. Uh, the lawyer, he had some questions for him, and uh, they're working on a, a plan, a uh, final plan, because you know, I'm gone on and they haven't been able to do anything the way that the weather is and stuff. And that's all I can tell you that they're uh, they're all working together and they're so. Do they have a plan on when they're going to start? A couple of weeks is what uh, I've been uh, after. The contractor and stuff, and he says he said I could probably get uh, something done there in a couple of weeks. That would be cool. He says the weather is what's speaking us right now because you know you get ready to do something and then you get a snowstorm like we got the other day there and stuff that just messes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's in the hands of those three and they've been uh, you know talking back and forth and they're working on it. That's all I can tell you. 
I don't have anything to add it because of the weather. I know it screws everything up, but I, I, I hope they understand the, 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 the importance of them getting out. Oh, I know. I Oh, no, the minutes. The minutes. The minutes. Yes. No, that's the part, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, the minutes. The minutes. From, well, I've had one minute. I, I just have, have you see. been maintaining the, the silk? Yeah. Okay. Yes. As we I, I did get a chance to go out there today, and uh, it did look no worse than two weeks ago. Um, so I do think the hay bales are doing a decent job, at least, and not making the situation worse. A lot of those flowing through there, it's clear. There didn't seem to be, you know, any silt or anything in it, or sand, whatever you want to call it. Matt, do you mind repeating yeah, yourself uh, so Linda and Joan can hear what you said, please? Sure. Um, I went out there today to check on the situation, and it looks the same as two weeks ago. So I think at the very least, it's the situation isn't getting worse, uh, maybe with the hay bales or with everything that's been done. So that's a positive, at least. Yeah, yeah. that is good. Thanks, Thanks Matt. And I can I can show pictures if people want to see them as well. Sure. Okay. Uh, Hartley, can I get uh, screen sharing, please? None. Thank you. Okay. The marker has not changed here. I'll just scroll through these. Here, I I didn't get a good, really good shot of it, but it, it did show a lot of uh, mm -hmm. running water, but I didn't see any silts in uh, the water that was running right here. That's what I saw also. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's a good yep. So, just wanted to share those. Yeah. Are there hay, hay bales halfway up? I can't see from Yes, the there are. Uh, right. Yes, there are. It's hard to see from where my angle, where I take the pictures, but you can see them right here. Okay. There's like three sections. There's yeah. like half the way, and then there's like even further. Up. Yeah. Matt. Matt just pointed out the three yep. stuff. Yeah. That With my, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but right here, yeah. it's kind of okay. lost in the snow. Yeah. Good. Now, um, the minutes from our last meeting, obviously, we haven't approved them yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but the meeting before, we had like items that we asked. I just want to make sure we're on top of what we asked last time. Did we ask with mine? I can't remember. Just so we don't have to. Um, Do you have anything? We had handed? asked the an update on the restoration plan. Okay. Correct. Yes, I think that's my brain can't remember things. Yes, that's exactly what we asked for. Oh. So, go ahead, Matt. Uh, just uh, I believe on February eighth, we did ask that the emergency mitigation plan that Stan drew up was implemented by February twenty second. Um, okay. But I th I do think I guess with the weather and everything we 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 were aware that it was it would have been hard to implement or install any of that stuff um, with the snow coming in. So I'm not sure. Other than that, I think the two the, uh, February 22nd meeting. I think what James said that was all we required at the 22nd meeting. And the meeting before we got everything we needed, right? So what we required from the meeting before. The, the meeting before we wanted him to have a plan, and they did submit the plan um, on February eighth. Stand in. Okay. okay. So I, I, I would press them that you know I, I we need to. Jay, I mean, yeah. I know you have. <laughs> the wheel doesn't turn in fast. Believe me, I want to get away from this as much as you. You know, um, if we addressed it earlier when I kept on talking about the damage that was being done, you know, we wouldn't be here right now because we're here. So what are we going to do? You know, and I know they're talking more than this weekend. So 
think that that's going to the sea. That's going that's south, but they're saying yeah. another one coming in Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Monday, Tuesday. They said it could be a big one. That's the update. I don't know what else. No, Anyone would like to add? I'm good. I'm yeah, good. me too. I'm good. Yeah, I am too. Um, Thanks for coming in and checking in. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. 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 I wanted to make sure went over everything we asked for and he did it and say goodbye, let him go. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And I can't remember. So I yeah, I just I the only thing I remembered was um we did want him to start installing the mitigation stuff, but again, the weather I think has made that very difficult. And this and the hay bells have done a good job, I think, of mitigating uh yes. any more damage. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. And yeah, thanks I for going at, out and checking. Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. I looked at all the pictures online they yeah and they are doing a good job compared to what it was yeah compared to what it was good job well sometimes they need a guidance and we're not really supposed to give the guidance we can make hints yeah so all right okay uh three we're into the work session now um request for certificate of compliance for seven nine river terrace matt you met with town council regarding this i did um and more specifically to see if we had any legal action that we could take against the original applicant in order to get the fees uh unfortunately um it looks like since she's sold the house more than two years ago and because this is a passive wetlands protection act violation there's not much legal action we can take. Um, that being said, Adam is willing to write a letter. Um, if if I send him all the information and he can take a little while to look over um, all the files, he is willing to send a letter to to Deborah um, asking you know if for her to pay the fines. Um, outside of that. Uh, he did say that most duplexes or condos are also owned by a trust. I wasn't seeing that on any paperwork, um, but that's if uh, if I follow up with him on that, that's maybe another potential person or organization to go after for the fees. Um, and I did notice that I did confirm that the Red Street Deeds does have it as Riverbank Terrace. Um, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think it might have been on whoever filed it at the time accidentally put Riverbank. And then the, the Red Shoe Deeds just looked at that and said, yep, Riverbank. Um, so that's another kind of sticking point as well. Mark and Matt told me this when I met with him a week ago. And part of that is how that letter, if we send, is mm -hmm. going to cost the town probably a thousand bucks. Right. If not, I know. Two thousand. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> How does the commission want to move forward? What do they owe? Yeah, I was going to ask that. What do they owe? And if they owe far less? The Max is... I think by leave $400. Yeah. So do we want to pursue? I, that, I don't. That, I, I actually don't. I haven't heard of yeah. any. It was the last cause. We should yeah. Just let it... Yeah, I, I, that's how I... Yeah. yeah, I feel the same way. I, I agree. I think we should save. I think this would make more sense for a situation like Alyssa Drive, like a big, big organization or a big, you know, subdivision that owes a lot of fees. Um, this doesn't seem very worth it, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I definitely want to talk to Jessica about it when she's back in the office as well um, and see if she has any more thoughts on it. But I think for now, I can maybe look into just just letting uh the current owners know like hey just just letting you know this could come up if you try to sell the house so if you want to get ahead of that then you can submit 
a request for COC and pay your portion of the fines, basically. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't we discuss that? Yeah. I think we yeah. Did. We did discuss that. We did. Yeah. Um, we just wanted to make sure there was nothing we could have done to go after the original applicant, which it doesn't seem like we can, unfortunately. Right. So how do we move forward with the, the owner that is willing to pay and, you know, close out his side? Uh, I will send another email to Mr. Libby and maybe another letter to, I believe the other owner is Thomas Perry, um, saying, uh, just ask, just letting him know a similar letter to what, uh, Jessica sent to the, uh, people living at Alyssa drive and just seeing who comes forward. I think that's probably our best bet. Well, we know Mr. Libby did. We yeah. did. I, uh, I, I emailed him about the meeting tonight and, uh, he never responded, but maybe I can. I can try reaching out to him again. Oh, and he said he was willing to pay his portion. Yeah, and but he also said that the other gentleman was more than likely willing to pay his portion as well to, yeah. Yeah, to get right. this up. Yeah, the most simple thing would just for them to combine the fees together and just a- apply for one COC. But if need be, we could do two different partials, mm-hmm. um, which we've done in the past, obviously. Right. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you just want to vote to table this until more information um, is available, or I would just assume that we have all the information, don't we? Just right? yeah, yeah true, yeah. right? Until just sorry, until someone comes forward. Yeah, send the letter. Send the letter. Yep. To the people. Yep, I can send. I can send the letters. Yep. And uh, yeah, and, and then when they pay it. Then we issue a certificate of compliance. Okay. Or see if they need to come to a meeting to yeah. discuss it, whatever. No. Let's just see if they'll pay it. Yeah. already, you know. Yeah. Gentleman has it. Let's just wrap this up. Good right. faith. Yeah. yeah. Gentleman has it. Okay. Okay. Um, if there's nothing to add, we can move on. Yeah. Um, so we have 3.2 discuss did you know educational material do you have a copy of that channel yeah. so um what i'd like to do i don't know if you guys all look at it, i hope you did is i would i would hone this down at some at, for now i do a i do not a sample i do a final version let's say a quarterly mm-hmm. version and i do number two about the pfaps yeah because mm-hmm. i think people really or want information on that i do the, i do definitely do the one about leaving lights on all night and how yeah. they're disruptive to the ecosystems with humans mm-hmm. and animals um i do the nomo by the way james i looked up the conservation mix that you have to mow conservation mix not that often though oh really it's a clover based oh well this yeah. i looked up bluegrass red fescue ryegrass so well i'll include that too conservation yeah mix. so blue, bluegrass and fescue Fescue, not as much, but bluegrass, you're going to have to mow. Um, you know, usually a tri blend is a, a, a fescue, bluegrass, um, and a perennial rye. And that's and a rye, right, right. Like yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So that's going to need yeah. uh, mowing. Mm-hmm. And, so the thing uh, about the no mow is it doesn't need mowing. Right. And so that's mostly a fescue and clover, clover, grassy clover. clover. Yeah. And the clover's high in nitrogen. Yeah. So I'll put um, I'll put both of those in and in, in there, okay? And yeah. so people, because people really like to yeah. learn about that. And then I'll add the uh, the short invasive plants thing with the link, and and if there's room that you know the fact that peonies and love ants that and they love coffee grounds. I didn't know they love. Co- I know they love the ants, but I didn't know they like. Yeah, coffee. I throw all my coffee grounds on my peonies. Well, that's what <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. It's a great way to get rid of them. Yeah. But John, how are you planning on dispersing the food? Well, that was the, so. That's the next step. So then, once once I so I'll bring in a, a final quarterly mm-hmm. version, right? Yeah. And maybe Matt can help me with some kind of a, a graphic, or I might want to put graphics on here too. I don't know. I think we should try to keep it to one page. I don't know. Yeah. yeah but then well, take it to the BOS and ask if they can have it go out with the tax bills. Yeah. Oh, that would idea. be the the method of disbursement. Yeah. Idea. Yeah. yeah. So I think that would be you if for my idea 
was would be if it's in our budget um do some sort of um card stuff yeah line, i think yeah 600 that bucks in, that yeah, goes yeah. in yeah I read is that in our what i i read your mind really well oh. <laughs> Yeah. So I don't know because if we if can it's use our money. Paper, yeah. Our money for that. Let me talk, talk to the accountant. Yeah. yeah. Talk look. to the accountant, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. The, yeah. I don't know who the, I haven't spoken to the accountant since Teresa left, but let me let 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 me do some research on that then, and then I'll next meeting I'll come in with the final version and and what I know and just say this is what because I understand we should do for next step. I to think get if it out we there. do this right. We could send it out because the tax bill goes out biannually. You could break it up so it's not inundating. Like mm -hmm. you said, try to minimize. What yeah, you want it seasonal and not too much. Yeah. Right. So seasonally, we wouldn't talk, right? Like the one going out now, we wouldn't talk about, I don't know, major drought conditions, obviously. Worst, worst case scenario, we can always just post on the website as well, or, you know, oh, even yeah, if we can't do the website. tax bills. Yeah. 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 And also me and Matt, you probably do this easily. Just have a QR code next to each topic so that oh, people yeah. can that's great. You know, yeah. I can do that. Um and I think I have brought this up at BOS before and that so they would I know there's an opening there. So let me research exactly on how the best way to get this thing out there would be and then I'll bring in the final version. Yeah. Is that fair? All right. Matt, you'll help me. We'll work on this together. Yep, of right. course. Anytime you want to come in. Again, like Linda said, I think a card stock, something that's yeah. going to be tangible, so people yeah, can actually hang, up. hang it on their fridge yeah. or something. That's yeah, a really yeah. good idea. And it will just think it goes in the envelope with the tax bill. Yeah. All right. You know, okay. something that just falls out. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. like Unitil does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We get enough things often enough, whether it's the excess tax or. And I don't even know if that comes from the town directly. Uh, like yeah, it comes from Reading, I think. Or something. It's paid mine. <laughs> yeah. See, Reading, you have to pay it. You have to mail it to Reading. Mail it to Reading. Yeah. yeah. Reading. Oh. The only reason I know is But you can also drop it in the box outside, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but, but oh, where, yeah. I think Linda's asking where it's generated. Is it generated, it's generated out of this office or somebody yeah. else? From our right. Uh, some of the so places in Reading. Yeah, of right. course. So can they do that? Which I'm sure they could. Yeah. Anyway, I'll find out. Yeah, I'll go. Thanks, I'll John. go to the store and find out. It's... I wouldn't give up on this. I think this could take yeah. time doing, yeah. but I think it could really set the precedent yeah. for. Our, our I, we ought to do it every every time yeah. the tax bill goes out, and and once BOS says okay, and this is uh, they'll they might have a format they prefer and whatever, and we'll just say okay. And so mm -hmm. twice what twice a year, boom. So in the summer we talk about drought, and then. Yeah, and spotted, spotted lantern fly, and I think people would love getting this in general. Yeah. yeah, but you know, when people do hear about the 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 lights and stuff, they go, "Oh, I can't believe I have my lights on all this time." And the PFAS, and there's so many questions about that. And if the links are there, boom, right? And then they stop using Teflon pans, and they just start using cast iron pans, exactly. and boom, that's all it takes. Yeah, and pesticides, herbicides, and pesticides—that's yeah. the that's whole thing. Oh, it's just road, a bald eagle that stuff. died in yeah. Leslie. Yeah. 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 A rat that had been, had yeah. rat, rodenticide, rodent, rodenticide, or whatever yeah. the word is. I mean, there's a lot I of don't know. I have bald eagles around my house that are like pigeons. One for me now. I have this point. It's just, I know. It can on my goats. I around my area, but I, yeah. That's cool. Wow. It's nice to see them come back. That's yes, sure. it is. Yeah. Yeah. They're looking they're for majestic. open water. Yeah. And yeah. Oh. Of it. Oh yeah. What? They're majestic. To see, they're majestic. To see they are. how they float. Oh, you it's can hear the, the wings flap. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And that's pretty a couple cool. hundred feet up. Yeah. 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 And it's made. It's so sad now that ever doesn't. I know because they made for that. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. So there's lots of topics that I think everyone looks yeah. interesting yeah. that we can do. Yeah. We'll, we'll put the, we'll put the rat poison on the next one. <laughs> Number version two. Well, no, that's a that's a real issue. Yeah, yes, yeah, it is. It is. So, mouse poison, rat, any of that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, Joan, this is actually another one for yeah, the grant for Townsend. 
Yeah, so our, uh, the good news is we were awarded the, the nice. uh, what, thank you, the Wild and Scenic Grant uh, for a non-native non invasive plant training. Good. And uh, the grant total was two for $2,263. And um, land stewardship, and uh, I had three vendors bid on the training. Land stewardship from Amherst will be doing the training. And they will come in May and do a site walk. This is at the Adams Dam area okay. uh, for an hour to get um, the lay of the land and see where the knotweed is, like in the Jeff Street parking lot, and then mm -hmm. all that Japanese barberry down by the Oxbow part of the river. And then they'll come back. We'll schedule uh, in that month the four-hour training. Uh, volunteers, our two CONCOM staff, and apparently... I came up with this concept that no one's done before. I, I called um, Roger Raposo and Jim Smith at Highway and asked them if they'd like to uh, ha be part of the training because I guess I got to know them, some of the other grant stuff I worked on, so I knew they were interested in invasives also. And they were more than happy. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, th each of those departments, there'll be four employees from each of those two departments joining us. And because um, Roger says there's, you know, they come across not we oh, all the time. Yeah. And so that is, it's Wild and Scenic is going to use that as a model going forward to include. Mm -hmm. uh, so th I had to do, I had to change the budget and include in kind mm -hmm. hours, mm -hmm. um, but it it's germane to their work. So it's okay, you know, yeah, that, that, good. Um, and then Joan W. did mention to me though, that we, I should check with ConCom to make to see if we need permission to go down there and start pulling stuff out or whatever. So, uh, Matt, I'll, I'll talk to you about that. Mm. Um, check right. with who? ConCom. Con -con. Us. They have to go. Yes. They, the the <laughs> slide board has to submit an RV. Yeah. By the river. Right. Yeah. Most so likely we'll similar, about, yeah, to the stuff at Squanico Commandos, probably. We'll talk about that later. Well, no, that, that really should be, that people. should be, um, we should get that. We'll get on it, because the training will be in May, right? Yeah. And that but, will be. Yeah, before we know it. Yeah. Right. Oh, and in, 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 in the in the budget was some weed weed wrenches, which apparently are quite heavy. So I ordered a weed wrench light and a weed wrench regular, and then um, I had asked for the hardware cloth, uh, but that was uh, that's because Squanico Meadows is using that. But after I was in a um, the. New Hampshire's miles ahead of Massachusetts yeah, on their are. invasive stuff, and not, like, not just their invasives, even like salt, all of that, and which is surprising because you know monitoring boats going into their water body. Oh, oh that's, that's amazing! Oh, very good. Yeah, they, very good. They, that's you important. You get big trouble. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. good. They check your boat before you go in. Well, the the, the invasive guru did this training up in Hollis, a New Hampshire guy, and. Um, he said, you put down the mulch, oh, this is the knot we put down the mulch, seven mil black plastic, more mulch, keep it mulched, and deed done. So I will, instead seven of- Seven mil black plastic. Seven mil, I know. Mm. And this plastic, it's like, oh well, God, but you can reuse yeah. it, right? If you get the, if you get it mulched, it won't, it shouldn't get too destroyed, mm. and then the sun won't break it down. If it's seven millimeters, mulch. that won't get destroyed for a hundred years. <laughs> so we, we, the idea is you reuse it. I mean, it, I know, it's the right. one part I don't like, it's plastic, but at any rate, and he said that is the gold through. standard to get rid of the knotweed. And okay. um, so do you staple it? Or... No, the mulch, mulch, the mulch, 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 mulch. And you keep it mulched. Mulch yeah. under, mulch over. So then this is on the riverbank. Uh, right well, this close. is for knotweed, not mm -hmm. for barberry. Okay. Yeah. But yes, it's on, but the... It's on the riverbank near the river. Well, within 100, it's 200 feet. the Jeff Street. Yes. yes. So then you want, I would think you'd want to plant um, native things around there, blueberry bushes. Yes, I put in, I put in for the, no, I put in for the Nomo uh, of 75, a big bag of the Nomo. Okay. Uh, in the, in the budget also. Okay. So that's where we stand with that. That's awesome. That's all I got. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful job. Thank you. Great job. Yeah, it's exciting. It's really exciting. So it's, especially it. they were they were super excited about the idea of including town employees. Yeah. Apparently, apparently nobody thought of that. 
That's all right. I thought that was pretty cool. But I, I want to thank Jim and, and, and Roger too, because they've been very um, gracious and, and, and outspoken about their concern about the invasives too. And every, yeah. so everybody knows. Yeah. yeah. So that's what both of those guys do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. yeah, very yeah. small buckets. Yeah, they do. And, mm -hmm. You know, they try to their best. Um, yeah. And they've got them. I checked with Roger. Ro, uh, they've got the mulch. They've got the mulch. Good. Yeah. Awesome. So we don't have to buy mulch. Perfect. Um, okay. Thank you, John. Sure. You're welcome. So you'll work with Matt to get an RDA. Because you have to. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that part. <laughs> Blissfully. Do you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, moving on, if we're good, uh, 3.4 discuss refusing and abstaining process. Matt, you talked to Adam about this. Yeah, that was a good write up, Matt. Um, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. I want to read that yeah. again just so we all, it's not that long. <laughs> Matt, you, you did a beautiful job. Thank yeah. you. No, Adam, yeah, Adam's great. He's such a great resource. So, um, yeah, I can just really quick read it, uh, what I wrote here. Uh -huh. There is no formal process to abstain. It is treated the same as a yes or no vote. For recusals, it is best practice to leave the room for the entire hearing or discussion. However, commissioners do have the right to speak and listen to an item they're recusing themselves from, as long as they make it clear that they are speaking on the matter as a private citizen. The commissioner may recuse himself, um, announce that he is attending the hearing as a private citizen, and sit on the other side of the table. While every situation is different, it is best practice for commissioners who plan on recusing themselves to have no involvement with the entire application process, meaning they most likely shouldn't attend site visits or be involved in anything the public wouldn't have a chance to attend or be a part of. Yeah. Um, so I think moving forward, if any of you see that a project uh, down the line, you think you're going to have to recuse themselves, I think just let, let me know and I'll make sure that I tried to involve you, like not at all. I yeah. think that's probably best practice. <laughs> yeah, and that it's important in the minutes that you show that, um, yeah. you know, Linda Mack left the room. Because mm -hmm. she's in that. Right, and, absolutely. And I, I also think it's really important for us if there's any financial, I think that's the key. Right. I think this. Of course. Um, so if there's a financial connection somehow, you know, it doesn't mean gain that any loss, it doesn't gain matter. or loss, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, mm -hmm. that you need to use and that's part of our ethics training. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, so yeah. I, was, I was wondering, because um, James and I, you and I had a conversation about uh, two months ago, no more, when this whole uh, rail trail thing started happening. Because mm -hmm. you're work on the rail trail. I, right? yeah, I, well, I built that section. Yeah. And, yeah, and whether or not that's something we should um, pay attention to. That's mm -hmm. more like a financial thing because you were working for them. But And I'm on the board of the rail trail. Remember we had that no, conversation? Yeah. Right. And um, I don't have any financial connection. I'm just a volunteer on the board, but still. You still have a, a, a connection to the uh, due process or to the Maybe, yeah. to whatever you want to call it but so um but uh, so then you and i were talking about well then we wouldn't have a quorum or we were going yeah. to all your stuff but i think um so that's why i feel like we need to be really clear so should we have a form available to us yeah in the office that can be filled out and submitted to yeah Slot board or to Eric? Or can we? I mean, once we recuse ourselves, um, so say in in the worst case scenario, James and I had to recuse ourselves from the rail trails. This whole thing. Um, wouldn't the rest of you make a quorum? I mean, doesn't that not two no. out of seven <laughs> go on and it leaves five? But but if they're not, well, present, but if they're not present, right? Right. It doesn't, and we have right. a full commission. So right. We'd have to make sure everybody else that we had four. Right. So I mean, we're we're just down one. We should really just be down one. We have Joan, Pat, and Anne. So that's the other thing that you have to think about. You know, so you really have to think about this ahead of time. 
I think. I'm assuming and I, I can't say that I've been great at it. I need to get, you know. Oh, but you're leaving. I'm leaving so much. Well, that's, that's coming. Someone has their hand up as well. Just... Oh, yeah. Lori. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead, Lori. Hi, Lori. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, just so that you know, because I'm listening to your conversation, um, there's something called the rule of necessity. And you can ask the um, town clerk about it. And as long as you disclose what it is that you, that may be the uh, conflict mm -hmm. there, um, you are able to act. So you disclose, you file with the town clerk that there is in this particular instance or whatever, mm -hmm. um, there is a conflict. However, if you don't have a full board, the rule of necessity kicks in. Oh, okay. that's interesting. So is that the form you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Thank Lori. You, Lori. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, do we have any further discussion on it? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Back to you? Yeah. Okay. Discuss adding the 500 uh year floodplains as required on uh, submitted plans uh, matt you have feedback from town council and i have some feedback from jessica and okay. also you wrote up a bunch of stuff matt from different towns yeah, yeah. I, uh james had a good idea when he came into when i came in to see me um about looking at surrounding towns and seeing what they had in their plans so i just yeah. i looked at a few surrounding towns and see if they had anything um yeah. That was great to go through and see that. Yeah. I especially yeah. Groton. Groton was very clear about what they wanted. Yeah. On their that was good. I, I noticed the same thing. Groton's is definitely the standout, I think, of the yeah. bunch. Um, yeah. But yeah, so Adam said the commission does have the right to ask for anything to be included on in a plan for a project. Um, however, if we're going to start making it a requirement, um, it, we, it would be best practice to put it into our regulations. So that way people know going, you know, yeah, you know, first thing that they need to have this on their plans um, when they submit an application to the commission. Yeah. Um, that thing. being said, when I looked at surrounding towns, I I I don't think anyone yet uh, is is making the five hundred year floodplain required um, for what I could see, but doesn't necessarily mean we can't do it. You mean as a regulation, Matt? Yeah, as a regulation or as a requirement. So then maybe the only, the only thing is, is we forget stuff. Uh, the, so then maybe going forward, if something comes before us that is, say, near Riverfront, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When we say we want the 500-year floodplain on there too, not just the 100-year. I mean, and it's not mm, a ha hardship to anybody because it is on all the GA GIS maps now. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's in the mass mapper. It's not. It's like it's there. So it's it not is. like a, yeah. So uh, maybe then, if we just have good memories, we can just approach it from that direction. Yeah. It, when it, we feel we could say if it's within the two hundred foot riverfront, we want you to include five hundred year floodplain. Yeah. Or you know any any sensitive area. Um, include the 500 year because it's, I mean, 100 year stuff's happening pretty regularly these days. Right. So, so now right. the mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's something me and Jessica can take a note of too. When we, we get an application and we can just boom put that up on Mass Mapper and see if it if it's involved at all. The 500 foot, so yeah, good. Thank you. The good. thing that I liked about Groton is that they had it up front for the applicant, yeah, and right. it was all. So the applicant could easily say, okay, I've got this, I've got this, and I, you know, check their boxes. I think we need to do something in, along those lines. Carton does a really great job. I'm not <laughs> saying that we, that you, you guys don't, but they, they've, they've been at it longer than we have, and they're full, they've been fully staffed. Yeah. They're, they got a lot of staff. Right. <laughs> well, oh, that's thanks. part of, it. I think, a lot of this. Is right. we, these guys are given what, 16 to 19 hours a week. Right. 19, yeah. To no. do a 35 to 40 hour job. Yep. And I, I think we're getting to a point where all of this, the 
not all this development because there really isn't that much, but with the building and rebuilding and this and that, where violations. I, I feel that maybe we need to push. <laughs> yeah, for that additional like budget. Yeah, we do. I don't. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't know how to go about doing it. I but think it's coming. <clears throat> it needs to happen don't, because well, it has to get voted. I mean, it, it, it needs to get approved. There's a budget the every year right. that we right. submit. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You just add it to there and then go to the So we've already budget. talked about the budget for next year because they yeah. were pressured to get it in. Yeah. So well, I think right. I think BOS is looking to, I don't know, I was on the meeting the other night. I think they're looking to expand. But they, then again, you need the town folks to vote. You know, it's like we don't have a grant writer either because, you know. Yeah. Yeah, right. Right. And, you know, I, I'm sure there's things that are missed day to day because there isn't enough manpower and, um, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. it just like the thing on Pierce Road just so happened to be driving by that. Well, he knows why. They're driving. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Charlotte. <laughs> but, anyway, yeah. you yeah. know, it, it's that's a simple thing that was overlooked and the salt just the salt fence was even put up to begin with. You yeah. know, that was in the buffer area. And that's yeah. just an example. I and mean, then we thought Doc McGee, the hours that that taken up of just mm -hmm. done that, me, um yeah. you everybody know, all of us here. Yeah. Um, but I mean it was it was some it was something to get Jessica the five extra hours. But you know, it's like if if if, if, if we get what we deserve if, if as a town, we don't want to pay staff. So, and, and I also, know? I was saying to um, kind of hit the nail on the head there, James. Yes, that <laughs> that I think we need to um, what was I like just outline our job description. Outline the job descriptions a little more clearly because, in my mind, what I remember the agent did was site inspections, enforcement. Um, you know, helped when there was a need for you know, uh, different conditions and things like that. So they were really hands-on out in the field a lot. Um, and the administrative stuff was done by the administrator of the meetings and sending notices out to us and all the stuff like Matt does. So that maybe it mm -hmm. frees up time more to just do the enforcement because it does take a lot of time. I mean, you can see, mm -hmm. you know, it's not always here in front of us. Well, there, it just it seems to have that happened. Here filled yeah. out. Yeah. You know, so it, the, I can see that eating up yeah. Matt's hours real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two or three of them. Yeah. Or Jessica's hours. So oh, and then all the all the things Matt and Jessica uncovered that hadn't been that were, you know, a difference. swept under the rug all these years. I mean you yeah. guys have done magnificent cool. work. But what we were getting there, I think I think it's it's coming and I I it's being discussed yeah. and I we just need people to, to vote for it, yeah. to approve for the budget. It needs to get people to a meeting. Yeah, to be That's able a whole to do that. Second, so, another yeah, yeah. They even, even made quorum last. That's week. right. Well, that's yeah. two meetings to yeah. make a quorum. So we, we want, so the, it was voted to make the quorum 10 people. Yeah, well, I hope. And, but now, you know, we didn't have a quorum to, to vote. We we need we need a quorum or and seventy five to vote to make it a quorum for ten. <laughs> I would yeah, but that that's dangerous. I would never to go never to ten. Vote. But then again, you look at like Chelmsford, where you have voting districts that you have X amount of people from each district that represent them. Yeah. In the town meeting. Yeah, that's different. Towns and we're happy to do that. We're a small town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was um, 50. 50? Oh, it was 50. Now, 75 to 50. Sorry. I don't yeah. hear so well. I mean, it would just be... I remember. It would actually just be the board and whoever... I mean, 10 people is ridiculous. I think 50 is ridiculous, too, by the I, way. We used well, to have 200. How many did we have at the last? How many? I don't even think we had. Did we have fifty? No, it was forty something. Yeah, forty-seven. Yeah, I think. it's just sad. It's so, just sad. but we used to have two hundred. Then it was one fifty. Then it went to seventy-five. 
hard to get people to do I think it's when yeah, people... It is. But the, yeah. they will complain about the taxes going up. If the if they're really interested in something, they will show out show up right. because in the last five years we had one meeting where there was four hundred and twenty five in the building. What brought them there? The you, school. I don't know. Uh, it was a vote of no confidence. No idea. <laughs> what do you no confidence. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we should stay on our jurisdiction. Yeah, I could open up a kid yeah. or I, Thank you, Laura. I would like to know what Because I, I always remember it was always the schools that brought people out or it was, you know, well, taxes no or something or something. whatever. But yeah. anyway, okay. All right. 50. 50 is better than 75. Right. We might get 50. I like input over from this side of the table on the 500 year oh, yeah, no. floodplain. Um, I'm not. Uh, and I guess from this side over, <laughs> I, I'm not convinced that we need it. But I'm not. No, I think the, I'm I, not the I only host. Just, no, I think we should just like just we said, just Matt and Jessica, are, we're all aware of it. And if there's a situation where it's like, oh, there's water there, there's a well there, there's an intermittent stream there, there's less, and you're asking for the hundred, just if we think the five hundred, because we already asked for the hundred. But we don't need to change yes, the reg. I don't think we need to change the no. regs. Right. Anything, right. right. No, I don't right. think we anything should anything within the one hundred until we get a five hundred five hundred year event. But so <laughs> this is the the can worms. I, not even can worms because I'm stuck on that word for a phrase. But part of the with the hundred foot flood um, hundred year floodplain is. If you fill that area, you have to ex right. you have to compensate yeah. right. the loss by right. creating another area. Now, how does that pertain to the five hundred foot well or the five hundred year um, flood? Most of this town would be underwater. Yeah, we're we're a watery town. So I'm not. So yeah. Again, that's just my yeah, yeah. No, I, no, no. So let's think the worst case scenario. So what would flood? It would be everything beyond Wisconsin Cook River Banks, right? Which it already does. Which it already does in the harbor and in different places. Yeah. So, um you can see it on Dudley Dudley Road into our, yeah. our fields. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. I will say because I have commented commented before um to Jennifer Pettit that she, the amount of water that those fields or the floodplain as a whole takes and then absorbs and puts back into the ground within yeah. a, even a, a day, day yeah, I know. is yeah. incredible. Yeah, I know. In a matter of a week, we have a flooded field right back to normal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's what you have to think about is if there is, we are getting storms, they're more, you know, intense. Uh, they, uh, so if it does happen and somebody is building within that 500 year, if it's 500 year flood, then I think it's important for the future that we at least address it, like look at it and say, okay, just be aware of it, you know, because it is something I think that's coming down the road. So you're looking fast. at it more of as an informational yeah, item. Not as like, I mean, if somebody is filling like the hundred year flood, you have to compensate for that. I don't think there's a law that says in five hundred year you have to do that. It's not currently no. regulated by no. the right. But um but it's more of an informational to to like talk about you know what they're doing or to support the the hundred year flood um to make sure you do compensate for that. Because that's gonna make a big difference too. Oh, yeah. You know? Because I know when we built our house we had to have flood insurance until we yeah. had it uh, resurveyed and wow. submitted it uh, through FEMA. Yeah. Well, as long as it's on our radar, I think. Well, well I, you know, I'm like not a fan of radar. Side, though, quickly. No, I'm agreeing with what we're saying. Yeah. yeah, I'm agreeing with that. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I'm uh, just not a, a fan of radar because everybody could switch out of here and we could get new staff right. and then the radar is gone. Right. Yeah. So yeah. for me, it's fabulous. important somehow to put it in writing mm -hmm. somewhere, whether it's on the application, if you're within the 200 foot frontage of riverfront, mm -hmm. then we want to see it where mm -hmm. it is. Doesn't mean they're going to have to do anything or just, you know, just see how far. So Matt, what, what would that look like to just to change the application? 
Not the, we would have to change the regulations, which uh, Jessica's yeah. already talked about making some changes. So maybe that's something I can talk to her about when she's back. And if she if she agrees, uh, maybe we can look at doing that. Does it have to be in the regulation? If you want to give people town it, meetings, say something about the 35 foot buffer. <laughs> if we want to require something, yeah, it should be in the regulations. That's another way you get a lot of people yeah, to tell me. That's a, you, you know, you can put gibberish and say 35 foot buffer. See what, Adam, see what Adam wrote? That's what Adam said, though, about the 500 years, that it's, it would be best to change the reg. So, yeah, but that's, that's you know, a lawyer speaking, of course, they're going to say that. But don't we have something that we give people who are applying a notice of intent it's that the, they what we require? It's the regulations. The notice that's of intent that's the state, state, yeah, that's the and, state and if you look form. here, Oh. Matt's what Matt pulled from yeah. are essentially just where you off the uh, regulations right, of okay. each time, um, like Bloomberg. Okay, so I, when I was th when I was reading this, I was thinking that like an applicant comes yeah, they and they get checklist. their notice of intent, and we give them a checklist of what we want on all the plans. I think the we checklist is generated from the right the regs. Correct, but there is wrong, a correct, please. correct, James. Yeah, that's what we typically do. So the checklist is given to them, but it's exactly what's in the regs. Yeah, the regs outline what you're supposed to have in your plans when you're filing. Yeah, but I mean, do we have a checklist that we give them? So they, or do they just read the regs? And I think Jessica takes on a case by case depending on how. So, like, if applicants have done it a million times, they've come in front of the commission a million times, then no. But so if it is someone who is who doesn't understand what they're doing, then I think yeah, she has done that in the past. So I guess. What I'm, I'm trying, I like to look at these things from the applicant and it can be very confusing as I'm sure Jessica and you hear Matt from applicants. Mm -hmm. So in order to make it less confusing, if we hand them a checklist and yes, it refers back to our regulations. Um, but I think it's, it's just really, uh, you know, user friendly, you know, we're, you need something easier on something the eyes. Something easier on the eyes. And then Jessica should not have to do it case by case, per se. Because mm -hmm. what if she, she decides something and we don't know and, you know. Right. right. You know what I mean? It, it has to be a little bit more streamlined for apps. Okay. I think okay. for them to be easier on them. And Matt, didn't I, didn't I start so writing up the checklists? Before you guys came on board, we, we do, yeah, we do have a checklist, I believe, in our drive that says, like, okay, this is what we need. But I don't think there's anything specifically that mentions, like, what exactly you need on the plans that you submit. If I'm not, maybe there is, maybe there is, and I'm not aware of it. Um, but yeah, you know what we ask for to be on the plans. Well, like, we, sh we should have that pulled out. I mean, it should be clear. Yeah. That's why I liked Broughton because it was very clear. It yeah. wasn't like, well, maybe if if you're doing this, we ask for this, or maybe you know what I mean. It really it should be very clear for people so that right. I know you said that to us even way back when, right? You know, when I was on the commission, I just think so. We Matt, need to make it friendly. What does friendly. someone reference then when they want to know what they have to include on their plans? We just we point the regulations have what you need in your plans. So I think that's what we point you towards. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I can make it more user friendly, maybe like like Linda's saying. Um, anyway, I, I think yeah. why well, reinvent the wheel? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? All right, well, why not think about going towards a, a regulations outline like broad? Yep, yeah, and not to make it harder for people, but to outline it and to make it simpler. 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 Yeah. 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 It's so comprehensive. That's a really sweet, comprehensive. Yeah. Right there. So yeah, I guess hold a hearing to change the regulations. We could do that. I don't, just looking through it quickly, I don't see anything, anything crazy, but it's all really the same as ours. Yeah. You know, but knowing where was it? Discharge points for culverts, um, mm -hmm. including those in oak right away. Mm -hmm. um, there's something else. Uh, easements 
stuff like that. Yeah. Because it's, you know, God forbid if someone goes through and you know, tell them we can't they can't work in this area, but Unitel has the right of way to work in that area. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know that. It, yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, it's not that hard to change regulations, so. We're not trying to reinvent anything. Yeah. I think Rotten's done a good job, and we also have some great stuff in art, so maybe put something together and have a hearing. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's really right here. It We're is. not. It, it's nothing different. It, it, it's a, just a comprehensive list. Yeah. So can we you say then that we'd like the Groton model to be applied to our regulation to our for to our regs, Matt, for a listing. Yeah, we can look at doing that. I think that's is something I want to talk to Jessica first to see if she has anything before we uh, put that on the agenda. But yeah, I think that's that's probably a good idea. Well, wait till she comes back. Uh, yeah, if we, that we, or we, get we start working on it. Yeah, yeah, right. We, yeah, I mean, if the commission wants it, to do just, that because it makes it a more user friendly, simpler for applicants, yeah. mm -hmm. then we should just start moving on it and um, set up a time for hearing. And you guys can put together okay. what Groton has, how we would add it to the regulations. I don't think it's I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, actually. No, okay, works for me. Okay, I can look into what the process would be to change the regulations at, least, at the very least. Yep. Groton Thank you. doesn't have it. Looking quickly, um, I could be wrong, but uh, Lunenburg has location of stockpile of materials. Oh, that's very that's nice. a good idea. That's something we've yeah. asked for in the past. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then what about um, I was putting this out there. You know, a lot of places now are making sure any fill that comes in is invasive spree. Oh, yeah. Like that's huge. Right. Like all the Phragmites down along the right. thing that all came in and fill. So how do you do that? I, yeah, I don't. I, I'm not sure how you do that. Question, I, I don't know I, how. I'm not sure how you do that myself. I don't know. Um, and I just and, and, and that was at that was at that that seminar that I, that from the New Hampshire folks. Um, oh. I'll do some research on yeah. that. Okay. There are you know there's not just plant invasives there's jumping worms that are invasive <laughs> oh those worms are nasty and i got them because i had some guy do something on my car you had those worms and all of a sudden i have the jumping worms those are bad have the they eat the tree so roots much. they eat these, these giant worms that kill the regular cute little worms and they eat the tree roots yeah they've heard about that yeah. I've had, and yeah. they are yeah. creepy they're, they're oh my god they're so creepy did, did your chickens take care of them no or? they won't eat them they'll eat regular worms but because <laughs> these things are like Snakes almost, and they're big. And ooh, Dang. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to yeah. see how do you check or regulate uh, that fill is imported. invasive free. Imported fill. That, well, imported. We don't know who knows where any of this stuff comes. So the state ag doesn't check on any. I don't think anybody they does. They don't check, really. No. It's too much. It's too, it's too much. Yeah. How could you, the tiny seeds of all these invasives right. in a way. Right. Yeah. Good. Um, okay, so we're good gonna discussion. work on updating some regulations. I know that yeah. we've gone through the regulations yeah. last fall, but um, well, we'll so much of that was just, just typos and grammatical. Yeah, yeah. and also we made some substantive. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll check with New Hampshire and see what they say about that in New Hampshire. Correspondence. Planning Board ANR for 96 Fitchburg Road. Matt. So this is planning board just giving notice uh, of an A&R plan they've already endorsed, but they just want to give us a heads up uh, at 96 Fitchburg. Right. 
right? Yeah, those are <laughs> odd lots. <laughs> oh, this oh my cool. gosh, look at that. Yeah. Hammerheads, we mm -hmm. can call them. Is this down towards Switchburg? This is Route where 13? you'd see Roy's house yeah. it used to be. We had the little farm on the side. Oh, I know exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we they've done it over or not done it over? They've cleaned it up. That's all they've done. Okay, that's where the, it was really kind of lots of lots of animals. And Okay, now I know which one because there are a couple there. Um, well, so they're breaking also, out the... Parcels that break it. What yeah. was it like an six yeah. acre, eight acre place? Five and a <laughs> five and three quarters. It wasn't a total six acre. So they did a so, breaking on into two lots. But they approved it. Yep. <laughs> it's not yeah. jurisdictional. No, they, they uh, need to. The parcel A has underwater what? <laughs> <laughs> But we knew what to show our yeah. path, but yeah, it was a huge wetland on that property and it was all built, built in. When was that? Over the past two years. Oh, so he filled it in for the animals? No, the animals are gone. The animals no, the animals. Oh, so that's gone. since he bought it and got rid of the yeah. animals. Did you hear that, Matt? Yeah, oh. I'm, I'm sorry, what? They filled in wetlands? Is that what? In the last two years, mm -hmm. Matt, when you when you're back in the office, if you don't, if you're bored, which I don't, you'll like <laughs> it, did you just pull up some of this or this this property and look to see if there's any wetlands on it? As a matter of yep. fact, yep, the, can do. The person who was living there with all the animals mm -hmm. told me herself there were wetlands. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's well, great. I will definitely, I go down 13 a lot and I'll look. I'm not like some people where I look at it. You can't tell now. <laughs> you, you can't? Oh, because of the snow. Yeah, yeah. No, but well, look, it's, it's all in. filled in. It's all filled in? Well, filled in. Yeah, but Matt, so if, if it's that yeah. big of area, Matt, Matt, should pick up on it. Then it, it, yes. They, they don't well, see that. Well, I mean, you could see it. I mean, you could see the area. Okay. Prior to them, or as the case for filling it in. Yeah. Jeez, why why weren't we told about that? <laughs> My God. I was wine. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Do it and they work for the telling anybody. All right, Matt. So that's on your action. I know he's looking at the GIS, GIS right now, aren't you, Matt? Yep, 96 Fitchburg. <laughs> Or There's no, oh, that's nothing to comment, okay. at least. Well, we have to comment on that? No, no. 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 Oh, okay. comment. 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 Just an A&R. And another a &R for 112 plus that all. So this one got divided into three lots. One twelve yeah. West Meadow. What? Don't we have a bylaw? It's a three acre. Yeah, meadow. no, it depends on what part of town you're in. Yeah, that's true. Depends on what part of town. So if it's close to the aquifer area, then it's three. It's bigger lot or or around a well. Right. Then you have to do three acres. Twelve point three NR uh, WA degrowth in the Green New Deal virtual presentation three fifteen. Matt, I assume you sent out um, an email about this. Yep, I forward this to everyone. Zoom. With the link, yeah. Yeah, if I'm anyone's gonna... interested. Four point four. Uh, Linda's resignation. 
The last meeting will be we're resigning March 30th. Linda, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Um, You're welcome. Uh, I just feel like you know, being in um, right. on some other like the historical stuff, I have to. That's a uh, it's a more enjoyable and more than Hitting your head against the wall every time you turn around. I also, I also don't want you know. I mean, if we're going to be you know helping to make a lot of these buildings beautiful and have an endowment, I just think we need to. I'd like to be on the side of people liking them and not thinking, oh, she's on conservation and she's making me have to do something I don't. <laughs> <laughs> right. So anyway, plus I don't have time. I'm telling you, it's like. A, I'm crazy to have signed up for so much stuff, but it's been fun getting back involved and learning it again. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you Linda. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, and if you, you have questions, if I can help in any way, you know, I could be. What are those called? The, uh, what are they called? Oh, God. Uh, can you say it publicly or? No. <laughs> okay. It's a, it's, you're not a commissioner. But you're a consultant. No, 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 no. Advisor. No, no, no. It's a second. It's like the next step, and you're used. We used to. So no, when I was junior like, commissioner. No, an alternate. Mm -hmm. Ah. Then you can't get a quorum. You can call in the alternate. We don't have well, alternates on con call. We used to. I don't know why you did. Matt, did you hear that they used to have alternates on con call? I had no idea that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we used to, so back in the day, we always had a full board. We had a lot of people very interested in conservation, surprisingly. Um, and so we had a lot of alternates. That was also another way to bring in new members, you know, because they would learn about what we were doing and they would, they could come to meetings if they wanted to or whatever. Well, Anyways, know. it's a good, it's oh, a good way to, because uh, then you don't get somebody cutting on the commission thinking it's one thing, you know. And then finding out it's actually a regulatory. That's what we do. It's not, you know, it's not the birds and the bees and the all the little animals yeah. and critters. You know, it's it's work. right, right. So um, anyway, hmm. if you want to, you, I don't know why that stopped, but maybe not enough people were interested. Well, that's quite how many people do you really need interested, even if you have one as an alternate? So right. All right, I make this, you an alternate. Well, do, do, what do we have to do to? Make I don't that know. Possible? I just remember I we, you I didn't have to go through the board. DLS. I don't think you have to go through my memory, but I wouldn't. You know, I'll ask BOS. Linda, I'll ask BOS. Probably in the top of the list. Yeah, probably. But we would just uh, vote to have an alternate. Okay. I think is how we did it. But double check that. Oh. Right. My brain is. I'll, I'll check it. And then I'll tell. My and then you know it. we could get some others. You know, in case. Yeah, no, it's a great you know, idea. Maybe Ronnie, because she used to be on the Conservation Commission. And it doesn't mean you have to be at every meeting. It's right. not that pressure or go to everything. But like a, lot of, a lot of the boards, that an alternate only shows up when they know beforehand they're not, they're going to need them effectively is what right. happens. Right. right. Well, that's, that's cool. And all right, I'll, I'll so just Matt will cross, um, post this um, okay. up and we will start the process. I know we have one volunteer response form from last year that is in the lineup um if he's still interested um but still has to go through the order select um and so forth so could you put on the um the town website that there's openings on the conservation commission it's yep. advertised the notice of vacancy has been posted uh, last week, so it's on the board outside and it's on the website. Yeah. We used to also go through, um, we used to get, what was it, the, uh, it would say what everybody did in town for, you know, your address and then what you did as your occupation. What was that book called? I have no idea. Come on. Am I, Anne, do you remember that, that book? That's, uh, no. The census or something. But it was part of the census. Yeah, but we would get it as townspeople. So you yeah, said, I don't do it anymore. Everybody's, everybody in town. 
And so what we would do is we'd go through and we'd find, you know, environmental engineers or <laughs> botanists or that kind of thing. And then we'd like call them up. Hey, they stop doing all those print books like that. Hey, you want to get into conservation? All the towns to get and, those. Yeah. Plant, plant them. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. and all be an alternate. <laughs> I'm trying to think. My neighbor's got has a, he's got a few of them. Old old ones? Yeah. Yeah. I used to love those. I thought they were twenty cool. years ago. I remember getting them in Jamaica Plain. Yeah. Yep. Not anymore. Okay. Um, um so next is planning board transmittal a decision regarding five turnpike road. Um But hold on. Granted, so they're repaving the existing park and not redesign driveway to create 35 new parking spaces. What's it, five turn pike road? That's the apartments right at the beginning by. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which the back side, there was, it was really no. Riverfront. Yeah, yeah, we were over there, right? Right. Are they filing? Or did they already file with the I commission? I think they filed, but this is just a middle of decision. Okay. And that's, no Stan, that's Stan Dillis, so he'll file, right? If they need it, yeah. Um, it is close to the river. It is. We were there. Yeah. But they, they did a full storm water management plan. I think that was one of the things we had to we push them on. Yeah. Um, 4.6 ZBA transmittal of decision regarding five Ryan Road. Um, this is the first special permit granted for an affordable accessory apartment. So, which was passed. That's the first one ever? I guess. Yeah, because yeah. they changed the bylaw, right? So, they did. So you can do an accessory apartment as long as it's affordable? It has to be affordable or for a family member. I knew it always had and to be for a family member. It's got to be for 15 years. Well, wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's got to be in a pre existing a building that's already been, or part of the house, or building on the property that's been already been there for 10 years. So you can't like just bang them off. What? Mm, no. My building that's off the boiler. Oh, okay. Because yeah. yeah. affordable is high rent around here because of we're in the, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um that works for me. <laughs> planning board transmittal of decision regarding the Harbor Trace water treatment plant. This is the stormwater management permit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. It's been granted. It's okay. 4.8 freedom. Way operation pollination. Did we talk about the last one? Yeah. It was, oh. it was a different. It was a different thing from Freedom's Way. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is a list, and Matt, I'm sure you could forward it to people of uh, five different classes via Zoom and in person um, for connecting. Communities, walks, and talks uh, about pollinating pollination systems specific to the heritage area. So. Hey, James, can I have that card as an example for the? Oh no, that would be too fat to go in That'd a tax bill, wouldn't it? Too yeah, that's all right. No, but you can. I, I mean, can the weight is nice. nice. It would be the weight. The weight's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone else want to sample the wheat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
communications <laughs> and conferences. CPTC 2023 Annual Conference, Saturday, March 18th at Holy Cross in Worcester. CPTC is Citizen Planning Training Collaborative. Matt, do you know anything about this? I think those are old uh, items. Um, just, right. just MACC is offering classes uh, this month. If, if people still need to take classes for fundamentals, that's all, really. Okay. Um, items for discussion at the next meeting. What? <laughs> for the rest of our lives. Well, seventy-five. Uh, here for. So speaking oh. of 158 Main Street and the 500 year floodplain, that is the river is there. Anyway, yeah, right. That's why I exactly. brought it up, right? That, oh, that's yeah. right. The yeah. 500 year, that's right. That's brought it up. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So the next meeting is Wednesday, March 22nd, yeah. 7 p.m., Board of Select Chambers, second floor. This meeting will also be held virtual Zoom remote in accordance with COVID-19 safe meeting guidelines. Um, Motion and a second to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Oh, oh, oh sorry, no. I'm sorry, John. I because one thing for the next meeting. So it in with the did you know I, I made up a list of trees for drought in New England that are being recommended to plant. So Matt, when when we for instance, remember a uh, Warren Road, uh one Warren Road, we asked that six maples be planted in that one area. So mm -hmm. we can we specify to someone the types of trees we want planted, or does that have, does that have no. like from this list, or does that have to be changed in our way? To go, you know what I'm saying? I think that's planning board. No, we may we 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 to require we require the six maples that be planted over I, there. I Remember in that we I. But when we require tree planting, like we can just say the tree yeah. and how many, we don't have to change the regs or anything like no, that. No, no. Okay, okay. Depending on the application, you can say to them, in okay. this area, we want this and this and this tree. Right. Well, yeah, then I would the like. The thing is, is you have to, you know, the soil's involved and you can't just say, put a tree here. Well, what is it? Is it shade? Is it wet? Is it dry? Right. I mean, you're working with soil types and. You're working with the engineer and. Right. About yeah. soils. But it's there. really easy to figure out yeah. what kind of tree is going to thrive. But anyway, these are all drought trees. So maybe, so we should, this is in the. Stay, Matt, if you could have this stay in the drive and then we can re refer to it if we have to. Sure. For these, okay. I think everything should stay in the folder and just have meetings so then we can go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. But, you know, that's great. Yeah. Jennifer <laughs> used to be really good at that. So, uh, another resource for plants like that uh, and list is uh, Millicans up in. I forget. It doesn't matter where because it's wholesale only. They have a list on their website, and then I plan so on. So something else we can think about. So you want to discuss? No. Well, we're, I think we're good. Well, just just it's no, going. I just want. I want to write it down. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> for the next meeting, is it worth a discussion? I, I don't know if it's worth a discussion, but I just think we should somehow remember. It's another thing to remember. I'm sure the next time it seems Jermaine will remember that we can yeah. check with the drought party plants that are being recommended for these days. I don't think we need to discuss it anymore. Drought and flood. Yeah, <laughs> drought and flood, right. Take bipolar. Right. <laughs> yes. Bipolar right. planet. So you need a motion and a second Take to a adjourn at 824. Jones Savoy, yes. Linda Mack, yes. James Gates, yes. Pamela Brayden. Matt Javon, yes. Thank you, Matt.